Hi folks and thanks for joining us. When we first moved here to Mount Evelyn about five years ago, one of the things I noticed when listening to the radio was how much more electrically quiet it was uh, compared to our previous home. We just didn't have the same sort of man-made electrical interference and so that made listening to the radio stations and radio signals a lot, a lot easier. Uh, and in fact, the radio shack is away from the main house. The house is up one end of the property and the shack's a bit further down, uh, down near a little creek that uh, runs through our property. And that was a conscious decision to put the shack in this location to keep it away from all the gadgets and electronic things that are going on in the main part of the house. Now, just behind me here, uh, near this shack, is uh, another home. And when we first moved here, there was a little old lady living here. And I think the only thing that she had that was electronic in her house was her television set. And uh, we didn't really notice that when we were listening to the radio. So, unfortunately, she had to move out uh, and has gone to a nursing home and the house has been sold. And as of the beginning of this year, we have some lovely new neighbours. And they really are nice people, really good young couple uh, with very young kids and two very big dogs. So uh, I tend to keep away from the dogs. Um, but with them, they have brought a lot of very broadband based transmitting devices, such as television sets and switch mode power supplies and computers and modems and touch. Uh, touch lamps and all sorts of things and uh, all of a sudden things have got a lot noisier on the radio bands here because of the uh, all the different sorts of devices that they're using there and what's interesting is that uh, there are different noises coming out of the radio there or being picked up by the radio uh, at different times of the part of the day depending on what electronic devices are being used next door so that's one of the things that we're sort of coping with at the moment. And it has at times got quite bad. So I started looking looking at my antennas to see whether there's a way whether we could uh, minimise the amount of noise or reduce the amount of noise that we were picking up. So if you have a look at uh, where the antennas are located here in this particular situation, you'll see that they're located quite close to our lovely new neighbours. So I started looking at possible solutions, perhaps a different antenna uh, that might work in a slightly different location in, on our property to see whether there was something that we could, uh, that we could do that could help minimise the amount of electrical man-made noise that was coming from our lovely new neighbours. So um, I stumbled across an online article by well-known shortwave listener and software app developer uh, Chris Smolinski and uh, looked at his blog and there he had an article uh, back in 2012 on the construction of what is called a sky loop antenna. Now uh, the sky loop antenna is also known as a horizontal loop antenna. After I read Chris's article and got a bit inspired by it I started looking at some other articles and uh, if you do an online search, a google search, you'll find that uh, uh, a number of people have written articles on uh, either Skyloop or horizontal loop antenna. You need to actually uh, Google both, and you'll see people such as Don Keith in 4KC and Randy K5RCD uh, have written some really good articles there, and they're worth uh, looking at to see whether you can uh, pick up some ideas for a horizontal loop antenna, which is exactly what I did. Here's a diagram by Lars, OZ1BXM, and it shows a basic design for a horizontal loop antenna. And he's got some measurements there that he's worked for his particular location. So uh, I took the design of that and adapted it to where I could fit it into my property. Now because of where the lovely new neighbour's house is, we had to try and keep the antenna away from there as much as I could because I knew the closer it was going to be, particularly on one side of the antenna, uh, it was a fair chance that we might start picking up some more noise. And also because of where my property ends on the other side, the other boundary of the property, 
and also because of where the best tree supports were, I ended up not with a square loop antenna design like Lars's developed, but rather a rectangular one. So the size of this loop is at the ends 8 metres long, and uh, in the long sides it's 21 metres, so it's a total length of 58 metres or around 190 feet. Now it's not as long as I would like, but that's all I've got at the moment in terms of uh, being able to fit it easily on the property. So let me walk you through the antenna and where it is on the location of our property. So this is the area that we're going to be using to uh, extend our loop antenna uh, across, the, uh, across the creek. And there you can see the ballon uh, where the antenna joins to make the complete loop. Uh, it's marked as a 4 to 1 ballon there. Uh, so it's about 200, 250 ohms in that area there. I did have a 9 to 1 ballon that I uh, put in there as well, uh, just to see how that worked. And that worked okay as well, but we didn't quite get as much signal there. The signals were actually stronger if I used the 4 to 1 ballon in this particular situation. And uh, it uses um, coax back to the uh, radio. Now... Uh, on some of the antenna, a lot of the antenna designs, they're using um, uh, 400, 400 ohms or 450 ohm uh, ladder line uh, as the lead-in. Uh, I didn't have that, and I had some coax, so uh, that seems to be working okay at the moment. I do need to say that this is an anten antenna that I wouldn't use as a transmitting antenna. I'd want to make a few modifications to it before I started to put some power through it. But from the point of view of a listening antenna, it's working really quite well. This particular point is raised up on a metal pole. See, the antenna extends from the feed point there near the shack, extends right out across the creek and over to the other side. We're using a 13 strand plastic covered wire. It's a um, a black coated wire so it's actually really quite a stealth antenna it's really hard to see when you've got it in the air so here's our second uh, support for the antenna we used uh, little uh, white egg insulators and they seem to uh, work really well and now we're going across to the third antenna support uh, which is 8 metres away so now we're going to stumble our way across the creek again and uh, fortunately the creek's not flowing too fast today which is good and uh, so we'll get across to the other side there and uh, see where the next support is and so there's our next support there actually you can see the one leg of the 40 meter antenna plus you can see one leg of the, the loop antenna and so then that final uh, support there goes back to uh, the feed point um, back here where we started before. And there's the feed point for our antenna. So I've had the antenna up now since about the beginning of July, so I've had an opportunity to do quite a few tests on it and, uh, and see how it performs. And it's actually performing really well. It is certainly a quieter antenna. It's picking up less noise, uh, and so that's making it easier to, to hear the signals. On some bands, we notice that the signals are probably down by one or two S points 
uh, compared to, say, the specifically cut antennas, say the one for 7 megs uh, on the 41 metre band or the 40 metre band, um, it's probably just a little bit down compared to that uh, dipole that we've got up there. Uh, but the important point is that the noise level is down by about 3 or 4S points. So effectively, I can hear better on the loop antenna than I can on the dipole antenna, just purely because it's not picking up the same sort of noise. So is this because uh, we've moved the antenna further away from the uh, lovely new neighbours, or is it because of the fact that it's a loop antenna design, which a lot of people say is a lower noise antenna? I actually think it's probably a combination of both. Um, and I do feel, though, that being a loop antenna design has probably made the biggest difference. Because we haven't moved the antenna actually that far away from where the other antennas are. So it's probably still picking up a little bit noise, but it's not picking up the same amount of noise that we had with the other antennas. Here's a few examples of the improvement in the antenna. So we'll do the uh, loop antenna and then you can hear it the difference with the other antennas check this out see what you think Okay, so the horizontal loop antenna is an antenna I'm certainly going to keep up for quite a while, I think, at the moment. 
uh, while we're looking for other options about how to um, reduce the amount of noise that's uh, getting into our receiver here. It's certainly working well. It was certainly uh, it's certainly a good antenna to experiment with. Uh, you do need quite a bit of room to be able to extend it out. I'd love to have it uh, a bigger antenna. Um, haven't got the room at the moment to be easily able to do that. Uh, so for this experimental version, I'm just sort of leaving it as it is for the moment and we'll see how it goes. But if I can get a bigger one up, I'll certainly uh, certainly will do so. But I'm really pleased with the results and it was worth uh, it was worth doing. I find that I'm now spending most of my listening is actually done on the loop antenna uh, rather than on some of those other antennas. But I've still got the other antennas up and operating because, as I said earlier on, it depends on the type of noise uh, and what part of the shortwave spectrum that that noise is, is affecting um, that you can choose the antenna that you want. And sometimes the other antennas, the uh, double bazooka antennas that I've had for quite some time now, uh, and the PAR SWLN fed antenna is still a very good antenna. Uh, and I can switch between all of those antennas and decide which one is the best for a particular frequency for a particular station. So it's nice to have that flexibility and the loop antenna, the horizontal loop antenna, has certainly made a difference to that. So I hope you found that of some interest and uh, if you did, then give us a like and, and uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel and we'll be able to keep you updated on further antenna developments here at Mount Evelyn. Thanks for watching and um, appreciate your time and we look forward to seeing you again soon. 73 and a good DX.